But here's Dennis in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, as we stick with the phones. Great to have you, Dennis. Welcome. Oh, Rush, i got to tell you, I've listened to you for so many years, I lost count. And this is the first time that I, I couldn't believe it. I dialed the number in the rank. I said, oh, my gosh, I'm going to get through and talk to the legend. Well, I can't believe it. But uh, the last caller you had, Nancy, she pretty much said something that I was going to say, but a little differently. I, You know, when Trump answered that question, I, you know how fast Chris Matthew answers. He'll hit you with one question and then another question, and he just uh, pounds you, you know. And I, I thought that uh, Trump did great. You know why? Because he realized, and it was a hypothetical question, what if abortions were illegal? And right away, he didn't hesitate. He said, well, yeah, then she should be punished. In other words, he didn't say what the punishment should be, but the point was, he I know. Said, I know. Yeah. He was he was being consistent on the on the law law and order thing that that right. he has established with his position on immigration. He, I know. Flashing through his head was I got to be consistent. Got to be consistent. So so he breaks the law. I got to say we're going to punish him. Otherwise, what I'm saying about immigration, they're going to blow up. So I know. I know how this happens. I know exactly what the what the what the the, the instantaneous brain firing going on in Trump's skull was. I know exactly what happened in there. What he didn't yeah. realize was he was being set up. Oh, yeah, because it didn't, after a while, the question was forgotten. You know, it's like, well, yeah, a bit of, I talked to a few people who are Trump supporters, and they all felt the same way. They said, well, it was a hype that they said if it was illegal. Well, what part of illegal don't they understand? But the point is, I well, No, no, I didn't. I mean, whoa, 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 wait. See, this is the point. It got way beyond illegal. It got, all of a sudden, now we're talking about murder and yeah. death and killing and all the things nobody wants to talk about when they talk about abortion. It's just, and that's where Matthews took it. Yeah. Well, I'm a great... So you think she's kidding? You, you think a woman's doing murder, right? She's going to murder, you got to punish, right? You got to do something. You got to punish. You got to punish, right? You gotta, you, 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 what do you... No, I, no, I haven't decided. How come you haven't decided? You think it's illegal? You think it's, you think it's murder, right? You haven't, you haven't decided. Well, I... I, I <laughs> Well, I got to tell you, you, you and I are we're the same page for almost everything. And I, well, most, I, matter of fact, I can't remember what I said. But I just, I just wanted to throw that out that you know to people thinking about it. Say, listen, he answered a question really quick, considering what the question was. And and I think that uh, people underestimate Donald Trump. They really do. And I think that uh, I believe he's going to get the nomination. But I, or, I but I. Whether he does or not, I, I've been impressed with how he does things because he's his own man. And that's what I wanted to say to you. You are, too. And I, I just can't believe I got food today. Well, you did, sir. And I'm so glad that you did. I thank you uh, profoundly, very much. Um, grab soundbite number eight. This is CBS This Morning. John Heileman has his own show with Mark Halpern on Bloomberg. Uh, is being interviewed here by Charlie Rose. And uh, Charlie Rose says to Highland, okay, Trump is already behind by about 10 points in Wisconsin to Ted Cruz. And then this abortion thing happened, this controversy last night, John, with Trump and uh, and Matthews. What impact do you think that's going to have on Trump? It comes at the end of a bad week for Trump, about as bad a week as he's had in a long time. If you think about this controversy coming on the heels of the Corey Lewandowski arrest uh, for battery, coming on the heels of the fight that Trump and Ted Cruz were in, where many people thought Trump went over the line in terms of criticizing Ted Cruz's wife in a kind of unpleasant way. It's the most sustained kind of bad set of news cycles that Trump has had in a while. You pointed out that Marquette poll has Trump down 10 to Ted Cruz. That was all before Scott Walker and endorse Ted Cruz. So it looks right now like Donald Trump could be headed for not just a defeat, but a pretty definitive or clear defeat at the hands of Ted Cruz in a week. And it's, I think, significant. You know, Wisconsin, within the context of getting to 1,237, uh, it's already iffy. I mean, you, you need, what, Trump needs 53, 55% of the delegates remaining. And Wisconsin, he was leading up there by him. I've, I've talked to Trump. He wasn't going to win Wisconsin. Cruz was always going to win. No, he wasn't. A couple of weeks ago, Trump was up by double digits in Wisconsin. Well, it wasn't going to hold up. It's always going to be Trump's state, Cruz's state. No, it wasn't always going to be Cruz's state. 
And now it is. I don't know. I don't know how much weight the Walker endorsement uh, has. It, it can't hurt, obviously. Anyway, after Heilman said, "You know what? This is a bad week for Trump. Maybe the worst week that Trump's ever had." He said it happily. Said it uh, with a lot of glee. Gail King, the Oprah's BFF, then chimed in with this. Well. What do you what do you, what do you think makes it different this time, John? Because every time he says something controversial, his numbers seem to go up. So why won't that happen this time, John? Why not? Why not? It's an interesting, unusual situation here in Wisconsin where all the focus is on this state. And this state has the confluence of talk radio. Conservative talk radio here is anti-Trump. That's unusual. The Republican establishment is firmly anti-Trump. And you've got this huge core of suburban Republican women who seem to not be reacting well to some of the particular nature of these controversies that Trump has gotten into in the last week. And that confluence of things is putting him in a pretty vulnerable situation, to say the least. Yeah, I think there's a lot of people look this as a surprise. Trump was going to win Wisconsin. This was at this point in the campaign. This was this was the I don't know, the dotting of the of the I, the crossing of the T. This was the final uh, march where nobody left had a prayer. Cruz needs 80 percent. Kasich is just there to whatever. Uh, so this was, and there might have been some overconfidence. I don't know. Uh, there might have been some assumption that uh, they were infallible at the Trump campaign. But this, Heilemann's right, this has not been a, a, a good week. And at some point, these things that don't affect Trump, at some point they're going to. Law of averages, Moore's Law, you I mean, I mean, whatever. At some point, it is going to matter. And there's another thing that you have to, if you want to look at this honestly. There is not, you know, Cruz. Some people go, go at it this way. Cruz always said that that if it was just a two man race, you get all these other guys out of there. Just leave it, Cruz versus Trump. That Cruz would win everyone. Maybe not New York, but win everyone simply on the basis of numbers. Because the anti-Trump vote in every primary has been larger than the pro-Trump vote. Now, it's been divvied up. Cruz got some. Rubio got some. Jeb got some. Dr. Carson got some. So the Cruz theory has been the majority, when those guys get out, the majority of people voting for them will vote for me. And in every one of these primaries, I will dwarf Trump. And... Some political professionals, and that's not what's going to happen. What's going to happen is that the party, Republican primary voters, are going to realize that Trump's a nominee, and they're going to coalesce behind him in a show of unity, and everybody's going to get with the winner, and the wind is going to be at their backs, and they're just going to sail right into the nomination. That's not happening, at least not in Wisconsin. Snurdly, tell me, how many people do you really think ever thought Cruz would be up double digits in Wisconsin at any point. Yesterday, last week, a month ago, because there was... It started... It, that's right. That's what. That's when the, the, the Trump began to lose the double-digit lead in Wisconsin last... Predating all of this stuff that's happened this week. No, Nobody thought Cruz had a chance in Wisconsin. Wisconsin especially... Uh, given the liberal makeup, even though there's a Republican governor there and, and Paul Ryan is there, but you know, it's establishment. Establishment is not pro-Cruz. I mean, they'd be lining up behind him now, but that's not because they want him to get the nomination. That's uh, hopefully so he can stop Trump. Uh, pure and simple. Brief time out. We've got more, folks. Always have more. We'll be back with it after this.